Your love is devoted Like a ring of solid gold Like a vow that is tested Like a covenant of old Your love is enduring Through the winter rain And beyond the horizon With mercies for today Faithful you have been, and faithful you will be. You pledge yourself to me, and that's why I sing your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. Your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. Your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips you father the orphan your kindness makes us whole and you shoulder our weakness and your strength becomes our own now you're making me like you clothing me in white bringing beauty from ashes for you will have your bride free of all her guilt and rid of all her shame and known by her true name and that's why I sing your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips. Ever be on my lips, and you will be praised, and you will be praised. With angels and saints, so we sing worthy are you, Lord, and you will be praised, and you will be praised. With angels and saints, so we sing worthy are you lord and you will be praised and you will be praised with angels and saints who we sing worthy are you lord and you will be praised and you will be praised with angels and saints who we sing worthy are you lord and that's why i sing your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will Ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. God of Abraham, you're the God of covenant and of faithful promises. Time and time again, you have proven you do just what you said. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain steadfast. And let my heart learn when you speak a word, it'll come to pass. Great is your faithfulness to me. Great is your faithfulness to me from the rising sun to the setting same i will praise your name great is your faithfulness to me 
God from age to age, though the earth may pass away, your word remains the same. Your history can prove there's nothing you can do. You're faithful and true. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain steadfast. And let my heart learn when you speak a word, it will come to pass. Great is your faithfulness to me. Great is your faithfulness to me. From the rising sun to the setting same, I will praise your name. Great is your faithfulness to me. I put my faith in Jesus, my anchor to the ground, my hope and firm foundation. He'll never let me down. I put my faith in Jesus, my anchor to the ground, my hope and firm foundation. He'll never let me down. Oh, he'll never let me down. Great is your faithfulness to me great is your faithfulness to me from the rising sun to the setting same i will praise your name great is your faithfulness to me from the rising sun to the setting same i will praise your name from the rising sun to the setting same i will praise your name great is your faithfulness to me Dear God, thank you for gathering us all here today in your spirit and just allowing us to worship together, God, and for keeping all of us safe throughout this time and for protecting all of our families, God. I pray that you allow us just to be attentive to the word that's going to be given today and that you will just open up our hearts and minds into receiving the word that you plan for us to receive today, God, and be able to apply this into our own lives. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you. I don't know where they have put him, the reasons given for the deposit of her tears. But did I not share? Did I not teach? Did I not tell you of the abode to where I return? Indeed, on that day I forewarned that rock of the theme song of the rooster, blueprints I'm designing, materials I'm fastening, rooms I'm preparing in my father's house to where we will abide. Yet she turned and saw me, but did not perceive me. A moment not dissimilar to a time at the tabernacle festival, when the guards came to arrest, but the hour had not yet come, though now the shorthand had marked its arrival. Assuming me worker of the fields, this gardener listened, and after all her cries, I called for the namesake of she who bore me. Magdalene turned, no longer a tender to the green, but educator, teacher, Rabboni. So a message instead I deposited, for her to share to my brothers, for those Simon named Peter, his brother called Andrew, James, John, Philip and Matthew, Thomas and Bartholomew, Judas son of James, Alphaeus' kid, another brother named James, Simon the Zealot and over 500 more that learnt I was ascending to the right hand of the Father 
a deposit for a mortgage of the home that I offer, paid for full in my death, signed off with my breath. As the guarantor I arose, so seated high I end this prose. Hi everyone, I hope you had a good week last week, I hope you had a nice Easter Sunday. I uh, hope you had a nice time with all your families whilst also remembering the meaning behind everything going on. Um, I'll just start in prayer before I go into the word. Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for keeping us all safe well, and healthy. Lord, I pray that you help us today to use what we learn to apply it into our lives. Lord, I also pray that you help us in our daily lives as well to grow closer and closer to you through your word. In your name I pray. Amen. So the topic that I want to focus on today is faith. And I'm going to start by reading Mark chapter 4 verses 35 to 41. And that says, That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along, just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. So I want to start by talking about the situation that they were in. So they were in a boat leaving and it says that there was a furious squall, which means that there was a sudden violent gust of wind that they were in which means it came out of nowhere, and so they were just, it was like they were peacefully going on a boat normally, and then just out of nowhere there was a a sudden storm, and obviously in that situation they, they were scared, and it was their natural reaction to panic and be worried about what was going on. And in Luke's account of what, uh, happened, it says that they were in a great danger, just to show the magnitude of the situation that they were in. And then they woke Jesus up and asked him, don't you care if we drown? And I feel like that's a massive question to ask because in that moment, it's as if they were doubting Jesus and as if they that he would allow what was going on to happen to affect them, to endanger them and potentially something bad happen to them. And so Jesus gets up after being awoken and he says to the storm, quiet be still and it died down and it says it was completely calm and in that moment God is showing the power that he has and that he's omnipotent and all he has to do is just speak and even the nature will follow what he says and then he turns around and he says to the disciples don't you still do you still have no faith and in that moment he's letting the disciples know that Nothing bad can happen to them when Jesus is with them, because when Jesus is for you, nothing can harm you. And so what he's telling them is you should have had faith in me to know that whenever these things are happening, just put put your faith, put your trust into me and I will take over from there. And then the disciples' reaction was that they were in in awe of him and they were terrified as to what was going on because they're questioning who this is, who who is Jesus because even the wind and the waves are obeying him and I feel like in that situation it will be a natural reaction to just be relieved that you're no longer in danger but they're shocked as to what they've witnessed and what I wanted to focus on from this story is that we have to strive to reach the level of faith that Jesus expects us to, to be at because most of us if not all of us in this kind of situation would have done the same thing you would we 
it's likely and easy to just panic and be very worried about what's going on. But what what should have happened in that situation, and as Jesus told them, is that they should have had faith and know that when you're with Jesus, nothing bad will happen to you. And if you trust in Jesus, and even to apply it to now, if you're struggling in your daily life, you have things going on that you're overwhelmed by, if you just pray, put your faith in Jesus, hand everything over to him into his hands, then he will take care of what's the situation that you're in. And then another part that I wanted to focus on is Genesis chapter 17, verses 15 to 19. And what that says is, God also said to Abraham, As for Sarah, your wife, you are no longer to call her Sarah. Her name will be Sarah. I will bless her and will surely give you a son by her. I will bless her so that she will be the mother of nations. Kings of peoples will come from her. Abraham fell face down. He laughed and said to himself, Will a son be born to a man a hundred years old? Will Sarah bear a child at the age of ninety? And Abraham said to God, if only Ishmael might live under your blessing. Then God said, Yes, but your wife Sarah will bear you a son, and you will call him Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant for his descendants after him. And so here God's made a promise to Abraham that he will have a son called Isaac with Sarah. And Abraham's reaction here was that he laughed. He It says he fell face down and laughed. And he's questioning God in this moment because uh, he's seeing it from his perspective as I'm 100 years old, my wife is 90. How, how can this be possible? How can I have uh, a child at this age? It's too late. But again when when god makes a promise with with him he should know that it's going to be fulfilled and i wanted to link this back to striving for the faith that god expects us to be at because again when whenever god plans something for you that plan will always be fulfilled and uh, i want to talk about hebrews chapter 11 verses 17 to 19 after They've had the, after Isaac's been born, and it says, By faith, Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He who had embraced the promises was about to sacrifice his one and only son. And even though God had said to him, It is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. Abraham reasoned that God could even raise the dead, and so in a manner of speaking, he did receive Isaac back from the death. And I want to talk about here the the contrast from when Abraham didn't believe what God had to tell him, to now, when God tells him, I want you to sacrifice your son, immediately he follows what he says, he goes to where he has to, to do a sacrifice, and his thought process through all of that is, even if I have to do this, I have faith that God will be able to raise Isaac back from the dead. And so when we talk about striving for the faith that God wants us to be at and at the level of faith that he wants us to be at, Isaac here, I mean, I think he's he's there because it's... It's an impossible situation that he's been put in to have to sacrifice his only son, the one that he was promised, where he would have generations and generations from him. And so I want to talk about from the fin- in Hebrews 11, uh, verse 1, it says, Faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. And it's important to always place our faith in God, no matter what situation we are in, no matter how we're feeling, because he's always there for us. 
And as Romans chapter 8 verse 31 says, uh, what then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? And if we always remember this, then it helps us to have a higher level of faith in God because as long as we know that throughout any situations that we go through, God is always there for us, helping us. It's, he will never let us uh, go from a different path to somewhere else so long as we always have our faith in him so I just wanted to have that as like a verse of comfort where you know if God is for you nothing can be against you so yeah that that was what I wanted to focus on just that message of always having a strong faith in God and knowing that he'll always answer our problems so long as we hand over everything into his hands so yeah um Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for keeping us all, all well, all, all safe. Lord, I pray that you help us to always have great faith in you, no matter what situations that we go through. Lord, I pray that you help us to always remember that you're on our side and you're always wishing and having the best intentions for us. And Lord, I pray you help us to always keep that in our minds so that whatever struggles we go through in our lives, we can always place that into your hands and have faith in you and know that through you, we can always achieve uh, comfort. In your name I pray. Amen. So yeah, I hope you enjoy the rest of the week. Yeah, bye. Mm-hmm.